Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. Demetrius is having a few technical issues, so very unfortunately, Kamal will not be getting a musical intro unless oh, he no. comes back <laughs> later. Um, but nonetheless, really, really excited for today's talk. Um, so Kamal is a senior machine learning engineer at Beat, which is one of the fastest growing ride hailing applications in Latin America. Uh, he studied machine learning um, in academia, and he also published machine learning solutions for human level performance. Um, he started his career as a data scientist. He also founded LFI, a skill assessment tool for data-driven roles, which resulted in a really successful exit. Uh, he's working now as a machine learning engineer, which he's been doing for the past few years. Uh, he's delivering end-to-end -end solutions for machine learning workflows. So we're really excited to have Kamal here. He's going to be talking to us about Argo workflows, potentially comparing them to Kubeflow a little bit, which are two topics that people have been particularly excited about. So I'm, I'm really stoked to to be here and, and to be learning from you. Um, I'll be sharing the GitHub repo, which I shared in our Slack channel, but also going to put it in the chat. Um, so anybody can follow along, set it up and install. The installation takes a little bit of time. Um, so if you don't have that now, you can always watch this on YouTube later after the install goes. Um, but Kamal, thanks so much for uh, being here with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. But yeah, I'm a bit sorry to, you know, miss that uh, musical introduction that's uh, quite famous, you know? <laughs> yeah, Demetrius has been asking yeah. me to, to do intros on the piano, but I don't think I have that that bravery to, to do it yet. All right, all right. It's cool, it's cool. Cool. Um, so whenever you're ready, uh, you can start sharing your screen and we can get started. And I'll chime in if uh, I have questions or if anybody in the audience has questions too. Great. Sure. So uh, here is the share button. Okay. The, the famous question: Can you see my screen? <laughs> I think it's live. Okay, it's great. So uh, yeah, hi, hi again. Uh, so today we will uh, we will discuss a bit about uh, our workflows, right? And we are gonna get uh, get a bit uh, on the practical side. We are gonna actually run some workflows in Argo, and uh, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, but first, let's discuss, discuss a bit about Argo workflows. So what is Argo workflow? It's actually a way to uh, run your workflows on Kubernetes, right? And so first point, so Argo workflows is uh, is built on Kubernetes. It's uh, it has the native support. It's built on it. And uh, yeah, this is a this is a, I I want to say a popular popular approach for uh, workflows that's running on Kubernetes. And uh, it is language agnostic, meaning that with only declarative YAML files, you can you can actually construct your uh, construct your uh, your workflows. So you don't uh, you don't need to like uh, lock in any of the any of the programming languages. And uh, another one is that it utilizes it, it, it utilizes uh, containers natively. So if your application is already like wrapped up around a say a Docker container. It is uh, it is uh, is using it uh, using it completely. It's it's making it uh, easier to just uh, wrap your web applications and run it in Argo workflows. And last but not least, uh, Argo is uh, so you can build your workflows with Argo, simple and easy. So it can literally take a, I don't know like a ten lines, or uh, or you can make this like a complex and powerful workflow. So this is actually one of the one of the sites that I like uh, about Argo. It can, uh, it's up to you, you know, you can make it, you can keep it uh, very simple or you can go very complex and powerful. So yeah, before we go into, uh, go into actually, uh, yeah, uh, hands-on, let's talk about like a why you may want to choose Argo. And of course, heads up, this is my personal opinion, of course. Uh, but you know, why you may want to choose Argo over something else is that uh, Argo does one job and it does it well, right? Argo is not, like Argo workflows is not a, not a platform. Argo workflows is only for workflows, but uh, this is not, not something bad actually. I would argue that it's something good because you know, you don't need to maintain what you don't need, right? No, it has smaller surface area. It means that there are less bugs, there are less errors, and you don't need to maintain, you know, the, the functionalities, the features that you don't need it. And the next thing is the build on Kubernetes. So if you already are using Kubernetes on your organization or on your job, then uh, then you know, adoption is actually quite easy. And uh, and uh, the next thing is, uh, of course, because it's running on Kubernetes, it's boundlessly scalable, right? You know, the scale that you can uh, you can go with our workflow is basically the, the, the capacity of your cluster. Third thing, 
which I already mentioned, simple things are simple in, in algo workflows, right? So it is easy to learn. You can you can get get started quite easily, which we will see in a, in a, in a minute. Uh, but it's also like you know, as you can you can gradually learn more about Argo workflows, and you can actually construct this uh, powerful, powerful uh, workflows that can uh, that that can uh, handle a lot of different uh, different things for you. All right. But how about uh, machine learning? Why would we use this uh, for machine learning, right? And uh, the first thing is uh, so the batch computation is quite popular as far as uh, as far as we see in the in industry, right? One of the most popular approaches is the scheduled workflows and our workflow does it well. So uh, with just work, with just uh, workflows, with just batch computation, scheduling it, you can actually solve a lot of your, uh, all of your problems. So this is one thing why it, it can be uh, quite suitable for machine learning projects. The second is that it has a functionality for artifacts and metrics, right? So I can store and keep track of my artifacts that are uh, used by the workflow, used by the steps or generated by it. So I can always, you know, go back, you know, if there's something wrong and check these artifacts, you know, what has happened in my workflow, as well as I can also emit some uh, metrics and logs. So like, uh, for instance, like your workflow is down, you can uh, already like, uh, you can go ahead and check these metrics or your logs for easy debugging. And the third thing is uh, this, this workflow, this Argo workflow is not only for machine learning. Uh, it, is, it has actually no limitation about how you should structure or how you should arrange your solution. You build your solution solution in the container, and Argo just manage, manages the, expect, the execution. So it doesn't limit you how you should approach your machine learning problem. It's it's not limiting you how you should write your pipeline or anything, right? So yeah, uh, these are some like uh, some points about Argo and why why actually uh, you may want to choose Argo. And uh, now we can dive into a bit of like a technicality behind Argo. Right. So in uh, in our workflows, this is our uh, this is actually the well the anatomy of our workflows. Uh, we start by defining uh, defining steps. So steps are part of workflows, right? And each step has two main elements. So in in each step, you need to say what's your image to run and the comment that will run in that container. Right, and uh, with with uh, stacking uh, stacking steps and you know arranging them how we want, we actually have this uh, have have the workflow. And uh, yeah, the steps do not need to go consecutively. Uh, actually, you can you can fork and merge these these steps to uh, to uh, to establish tags. And uh, each step will uh, in, in if if it's in parallel, each step will run in a separate pod. So you know if it's in parallel, you actually get a benefit from the parallel execution. So uh, in each, uh, so we define our workflows in uh, in YAML files, uh, and uh, so we start with this file, right? And we create our file where we define our workflow. In this file, there are two main components. One is metadata, the other is the specs. So in metadata, you name your, uh, you have some value in metadata about your workflow, right? You know, like its name. You can add some labels for uh, organizing, you know, like uh, different uh, different workflows for your uh, for or for categorization. And in annotations, you can actually provide more metadata like with custom labels. In specs, uh, the specs field is uh, is where we actually specify our workflow. It needs to have two main things. One is a template. So templates is like uh, is uh, templates are reusable units of execution, and uh, so you actually define what happens in that in that step in the in the in the templates. And, and uh, you need an entry point to say Argo, uh, you know, like a define Argo where you know it should start uh, start the execution. All right. So uh, with these information, we can actually go and check our first example. So what I haven't have in here is the the repo that we just shared. I already uh, I already configured my computer with uh, I installed my Argo and my Argo UI is in here. So what what I'm gonna do here is that go a bit on this file, which is uh, which is my the first example. It's this a simple workflow, right? So let's go uh, through the lines and see you know how we can structure our workflow. So the first a bit of boilerplate we define API version, and now we define what kind of uh, what kind of a workflow it is. So a workflow means that it's just a one-off workflow. So it will you will submit it or it's gonna get submitted. It's gonna run. And it's going to end, right? 
Next, let's uh, define about our uh, our workflow. Let me define a bit about uh, our workflow in the metadata. So the first field here is the generic name. So it's basically yeah, we need to. It's good to give name to our workflow, right? And this is this is uh, how you do it. And this is name of our workflow. And uh, the reason why it says generic name is that when I run it, the Argo will actually add some random string here so that I can distinguish between my runs. In labels, uh, yeah, we in here, uh, we want to keep like all, all the run statuses so that, you know, maybe like the next one, if I go to the UI or like, you know, I, I use the CLI, I want to see my uh, workflow still there. And then I declare that, you know, I always want to archive my workflow. In annotations, this is the place for your uh, for your like uh, your own manually, like a custom. What I declare here is the description of the workflow, and uh, maybe it's also a good idea to describe an owner here too, so that you know if it fails, uh, people can people know like who's the owner who can who can maintain this. All right, so this is about metadata, and uh, in the spec field, uh, we actually define our workflow. Right, first thing first, we need to define templates. So the templates, again, are the units of execution, right? They uh, represent a the node, they are reusable, and each template will run specified commands against the specified uh, Docker image. So what I have here is a, a very simple template. Its name is VLC, and it is using this famous VLC from the, from, uh, from the Docker repository, right? So this is the image that I want to use in this template. And this is this is the you know where it can find this image. Next, I am defining the comment that I will run in this image in the container, and the comment is cause. So what this comment does is that it gets some arguments which I declare here, and it's gonna just uh, print this line in a nice SP SP art. So this is my one and only uh, template for this workflow, but I still need to declare where the workflow should start working. And this is where why I have my entry point here. And in here, I just say the name of the template that I want to start with, which is the whale say. Right. So this is my workflow, and it's uh, it can be simpler. Yeah, you can see there are a lot of comments here, so if you remove it, it will be less. You know, uh, the metadata could be also smaller. But basically, the core part is quite simple, right? I have this image, I have these comments, and I want to run it. So uh, how you can run it is uh, I'm going to show, show you how you can run via uh, the Argo CLI. What I'm going to say is the Argo, submit, and then I'm going to point this file, right? It's in one simple workflow and workflow.yml. So when I submit it, hopefully everything will run. It's running. I can go in the UI and check it. And I can see that this workflow is running. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a it's a quite lightweight uh, workflow, so it already finished. And I can see that yeah, you know, this workflow is finished, and uh, yeah, it's finished. You know, like when it started, when it finished, how it took uh, se seven seconds, and maybe I can see the logs. And if we check the logs, we can see that you know uh, it does it. It did exactly what what it's supposed to do. It's uh, with a nice ASCII art. It printed our arguments. Yeah, so this is a. This is our first example. So from here, we will just uh, gear up and uh, show uh, how we can how we can construct more and more uh, interesting and maybe more complex workflows. Right, uh, Ben, are you there? <laughs> I'm here. Uh, we haven't seen any questions from uh, the audience yet, so I think that you're good to keep going. All right, that's cool. So this is this was our uh, simple workflow, right? And uh, and uh, yeah, as we saw that you know uh, it's just uh, with one template and an entry point. So how about we want a bit more complex structure, right? And uh, this this is why uh, this is where we enter the decks, the di directed acyclic graphs. The name is a bit confusing, and basically it's like uh, you know like arranging your steps in a way that you know uh, yeah it's it's it. it it constructs a graph, right? So uh, yeah, it, as I mentioned, it's a graph of steps that can uh, that can go quite complex in topology. So the, in this example, it's uh, somewhat simpler, right? But you know, there is actually there, yeah, the 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 the, the sky is the bar here. You can make very complex eggs that are executing different stuff in parallel. Yeah, you know, like a forking, merging, 
or you can just choose to keep it simple, right? And uh, and index what we what we use to define which step should run after which is using depends. So we define the dependencies from uh, from a step to uh, to say which step should run after which one. So in here, for instance, let's say there p1 is depending on the completion of say there in here in this step. So why we may want to have this kind of complex tags is the parallel execution, firstly, right? So because when this thing finish, this these two steps will run in parallel, right? So each step in our workflows is run in a in a pod. It means that you know you can run steps in parallel, and uh, yeah. So you, this is something that you may want to you may want to have to uh, reduce the time, the duration of your workflows. And let's try to try to do it actually. So I have an example here again. So I reduced the boilerplate a bit, the comments in this one. So uh, yeah, from the top, the our kind is workflow. Again, it will start and stop. And now we have some metadata. And let's get to more interesting one, which is the spec. So what I'm gonna, what I want to use here is uh, is the arguments. Sorry, is the is the input parameters, right? We we have said that you know the 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 templates are reusable, and um, one of the easiest way to make it reusable is using the parameters. So what we can do here is to uh, yeah, use parameters, to so use the input parameters to uh, to use the same template but uh, do different things. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one to make it a bit better. Okay. So what I have it in here is again just one template, but this time I'm gonna use uh, the input to make it uh, make it more reusable, right? So our template here is called again Velsay, but this time it is accepting some inputs, right? As in parameters. So it says that this template is actually accepting parameters, and the one parameter they accept is called say text. And in the container part that I'm defining, you know what it's gonna do? It's still gonna use the same image. It's still gonna use the same comment, but in the arguments, I actually defined, hey, the arguments should be from the inputs here, the parameters here, and the name of the parameter is this one. So what it's gonna do is that, you know, in a, we will see in a second that, you know, when I say, hey, run this template with this input parameter, it's gonna go ahead and replace them here. So, you know, next time I can run it with different arguments, right? But only having one template. All right, let's see how we do it. Uh, index. So after specifying the, you know, the spec here, we have a name, and now we define it as deck. Maybe I should zoom in a bit. And what I want to achieve is something like looking like this, right? So I want to I want the workflow to start, and immediately I want to to uh, to test running in parallel, two steps running in parallel. So how I do it is with this like this. So after this uh, defining what's the name. I say, okay, this is a DAG, and here are my tests. And because you know they just you know start from uh, immediately, I don't need to define a defense. It's just gonna start, and uh, they're gonna start in parallel. One task is called say world, and you can see that you know I'm using this template we'll say that we just saw with the arguments of hello world. So what's gonna do is that it's gonna go to this template we'll say here, and then my Parameter of for say text is hello world. So what's gonna do here is that instead of this one, is say hello world. Whoops. Right. Uh, and then in the second task, which will run in parallel, you know, immediately after you start, is I say uh, I give an input like parameter, but this time the value is hello there. Hey, uh, Kamal, would you be able to increase the font size a bit on? Uh, yes. Your ID, awesome. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, is it is it better now? I think so. Okay, maybe I can also reuse this part of it. Yeah. All right. So uh, it's gonna hopefully when we execute it, it's gonna look like this. And uh, let's go ahead and do it. So what I'm gonna do here again, Argo submit. New workflow. There you go. So hopefully we can catch this time that it's running. Yes, it's running here. Yes, so 
the workflow is start. So this is the head of the workflow. It's not the it's not a it's not a step, but I have these two steps running, right? So immediately after the start, I have two steps, two tests that are running in parallel, and they are running in different pods. So actually, they're yeah, you know, the parallel execution, and I see that in here they have completed, and in logs for say there, I'm expecting to hit. See, yes, this one held there. And then the second one, I'm expecting to see hello world. Yes. Uh, what I also can do is uh, go ahead in here in the step, in inputs, outputs, and I can see actually for this step, my parameter for say text was hello world. So uh, yeah, by defining uh, defining the decks like in here, uh, and we with using depends, you can actually construct uh, quite uh, complex or simple. Uh, depending on your use case, uh, yeah, Dex. So, Kamal, uh, you and I spent a lot of time talking about this um, earlier this week. We have an audience question about uh, why you would pick Argo, for example, over Airflow. I had asked you about uh, its comparison to Kubeflow, for example. Uh, mm -hmm. So maybe this is a bit of a subjective question, but why, um, maybe in a little bit more detail than you explained in your mm -hmm. slides, why did you pick this over something like Airflow? Yeah, sure. So uh, the reason why I so why we picked this one is actually first we picked the uh, Kubeflow, uh, but then actually we realized that we don't want uh, most of the functionalities of uh, Kubeflow, right? And it's it's fine if you don't want it, you don't need to use it, right? But actually, it's not like that, huh? You know, more functionality means that you need to maintain it more, and as we go simpler, it means that the service area is less, so there is less to maintain. And uh, and actually, this is a, the 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 break point for us was that you know the Kube Flake got version up, we tried to version it up, and but it started to use like a different uh, different authentication scheme, and we said okay, like uh, you know like uh, actually Kubeflow is using Argo workflows uh, under the hood, so maybe we can just directly go to Argo workflows, which is uh, just for workflows, right? So in our case, our main use case was having scheduled workflows, having scheduled batch computation, right? And this tool is only doing that and it's doing it good. So in this in this uh, in this case we opted for simple, right? And then actually it's uh, yeah uh, we I guess still yet to see the result of this experiment, but so far it's uh, it's resulted in less headache uh, yeah for us. So cool. uh, yeah yeah um and so maybe to distill that for example, because Airflow also has an enormous number of components and lots of different pieces of functionality um, that kind of span a pretty big gamut of, of, of tooling, but you sort of have to use all of it together. Um, your team opted for just the lightest weight solution you could find that did only the one specific thing you needed and wasn't trying to, for example, solve problems that didn't yet exist in your company. Yeah, exactly. So this is this is our uh, this is how we how we try to approach, right? You know, like instead of actually finding a tool. That we like and trying to come up with the problems to solve with it. What we do, uh, what we try to do, is to say, okay, like, what's our problem? What are our requirements? And what is the tool that can solve it? So, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. If you keep it simple, then it means that you know there is less chance that you know less places that it may break. And I think it's a it's a good approach for to first ask, okay, like, what am I trying to solve? What do I need, and what is the tool that can, you know, like give me uh, what what tool that can help me to reach that solution? Cool. Um, yeah, actually, another question um, also from the audience. I know you were actually afraid of this question, but I'm gonna yeah, ask it yeah. anyway because it came <laughs> Go up. Ahead. Uh, not exactly Argo related, but seeing as you are using Argo, you're I'm assuming running all of this on a Kubernetes stack, so your team is pretty yes. Kubernetes native. Um, when you picked Kubernetes, for example. What were what was the reason you picked it? Like, what were the advantages for you guys over, for example, like ECS, Elastic Container Services from AWS? Yeah. So uh, we didn't choose. Uh, we didn't uh, pick Kubernetes. Kubernetes picked us. <laughs> 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 yeah. So our entire organization is running on Kubernetes, right? So it was a, it was a obvious way to go, right? And um, and uh, well, you know, like yes, you know, like Kubernetes can be uh, like um, yeah, a bit too big to 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 uh, to tackle, right? And uh, to be honest, like uh, yeah, you know, like I also myself do not like I'm not an expert in in, uh, in Kubernetes. But how about Argo? Argo is running on Kubernetes, and uh, the the thing that I can say is that in order to use Argo, you don't need to be an expert in Kubernetes, right? The reason why is actually an Argo is actually an abstraction level on, on uh, Kubernetes. 
So uh, using Argo, 99% of the time, you don't need to like uh, uh, deal with a lot of Kubernetes stuff. Like uh, when do you need to deal it is uh, for instance, like a, a small smaller part. Like if you know the core elements of Kubernetes, like what's a pod, like uh, what's uh, what's this like uh, image, the container is running, etc. Then you know you can actually uh, solve ninety nine percent of your solutions. Of course, it helps like uh, to know more and more and more about Kubernetes. But in order to use Argo workflows effectively, you I think you know you can get away with just knowing the basics, right? Yeah, I noticed that um, in your Argo workflow YAML file, it just really looked like a simplified Kubernetes YAML file, which which is very nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, very, very cool. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, the nice thing is that you also uh, you also get a UI with it, and actually you uh, you don't even need to use a kube CTL for most of the time. You can actually read it the logs. You can uh, see you know what's going on, the container you have in here. Yeah. Awesome. Right. I assume that you're going to get up to this, but do you have examples? For example, when it fails, had a debug using Argo. Oh yeah. Uh, well, you know, if you use a tool, I think long enough, you're always gonna get like this nasty, <laughs> nasty bugs. Then it, yeah. Then you know, yeah, we go into like a, into a bit and maybe inside the pod. But yeah, you know, again, it's like a, this is one percent of the time, right? You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, yeah, if you get a nasty bug that you know, like a, you can turn it on, then yeah, you need to go lower and lower level. But yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, I'll let you keep going. All right. Cool, and uh, then let's go ahead and uh, see how we can schedule these workflows, right? So, uh, so far, we what we saw is uh, the the tiny workflow, which is you you submit it, it executes, it stops, everything is good. But how about we want to schedule it? Like, and it's actually one of the one of the two very uh, one of very popular ways to solve problems, right? In in, in I think like a, well, you know, in an organization, in machine learning. So. What we can do here also, like we can just start and stop a workflow, but we can also schedule it with our Go Argo workflows. So, and it's called like a well, Chrome workflows. And what I can do is that I can schedule a, a run of any workflow in using, using this. And let's go ahead and try to do that. So in here, let me increase the font a bit. In here, uh, we, have, we have an example of that. And this time, instead of saying workflow, we say Chrome workflow. Okay, there is a little bit difference between the regular workflow that we just saw, but not really much. Actually, the core part stays the same. So for instance, the meta part, metadata part stays the same, right? We still have the generic name and labels. In the spec part, it changed just a little bit uh, for the, the Scrum workflows. The first part is in the spec is the schedule. So of course you want to tell Argo workflows when you want this workflow to run, right? And for this, we use the Chrome expressions. Uh, this one means that, you know, run every minute. So every minute in my defined time zone, which is UTC now, I want this workflow that I specified here to run. And that's it, right? So this is this is the difference between the, the main difference between the regular workflow and the Chrome workflow. So from, from now on, it is actually how we just saw it. So a difference, uh, the difference, main key difference here is that, you know, you define a schedule and you, may want to also define a UTC, sorry, a time zone. So from here, we define our workload just like we did. We have an enter point, we have templates. And then uh, we have, in this example, we have deck. Actually, this is the same workload just we, we just discussed, right? I literally copy pasted this template, right? Now we have this template with inputs and I have two steps to run here, to test this running here in parallel. The nice thing, the difference here is that this one will now run on a schedule. Something is also quite easy. What I what I do, oops. Yeah, so I do Argo cron create this time. And uh, yeah, so uh, instead of submit, now I need to say cron create and I still point the, the my, uh, my workflow YAML here and I can see that it has been created. I can go ahead and see that in the UI. So in the Chrome workflows tab, I can see what like all my Chrome workflows that's uh, that's that's like a scheduled run. So in here, I can see that it's we created it in 15, 20 seconds, and the next run is in 13 seconds. So in uh, in 10 seconds, we are gonna see in the workflows that it's an instance of it has has been started. 
let's wait for a couple of seconds and we will hopefully see that, uh, yes, so we can see that in here, our Argo, Argo Cron workflow has started. And the UI is a bit slow. Yes, and we can say that, see that, you know, it has already started here. And the rest is the same, right? You know, uh, basically the Chrome workflows is just, you know, allows you to schedule it and the rest is the same. Now uh, we can already see that, you know, like this step has, has succeeded and this step is pending and uh, probably in a second it will start running and complete. Yes. Great. So this is how you can schedule your workflows, which is, which can be, uh, which is, uh, can be quite easy, but also, yeah, also quite powerful. The next thing I want to talk about uh, is the failure scenarios, right? So if you have a piece of code, it's gonna fail at some point. And the question is when, but you know, like it's definitely gonna fail, right? The, uh, the code, the program without a bug is no code. So, so uh, but uh, what can we do about it, right? You know, uh, so how we can manage these failures. Uh, in Argo, what we can do is to define these retries. So uh, we can actually define in case of like a failure what we want to do, and uh, and we can uh, we can do retries. We can also base it on conditions or not. We can try retry some certain steps, or we can try retry the entire workflow. And in this example that we will we will uh, construct and see, we will have a buggy task in our bag, and it's gonna fail, and we will try to re try to retry it. Let's see it in here. Yes, we have our cron workflow. This time it, its name is failing cron workflow. And the uh, scheduling is the same. This thing in here is not is, is something new. So the concurrency policy, so it's again, yeah, it's coming from the Kubernetes concepts, I think. So uh, what we do here is that, uh, so in case of retries or like in case of failures, do I want to keep one instance of this workflow or do I let like multiple instances of this workflow to run? For this demo, it's not, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, I would say it's not very important, but in, 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 uh, in your organization, I, I may, uh, I may say that, you know, like, uh, or it could be that, you know, maybe, you know, like you're running the same workflow in parallel, you know, at the same time or multiple workflows at the same time might be, it might be something that you don't want. So if you don't want that, you can always declare like in here, a concurrency policy for it, and it's gonna only take, it's gonna only run one workflow at a time. So let's check our workflow. It's again, quite similar, right? So we have this template with our inputs, and then we have to, uh, wait, actually, sorry, we have two, two different uh, templates here. So the one is available say that we just, uh, we just use a lot. And this one is different and its name is destined, destined to fail. So what it has is the, the same image, is, uh, is the same command, but uh, I, oops, I made a typo here. Actually, I, I, it took me longer than I expected to find what's going on. So I made a ty typo here and I have two Ws here, which this is a command that doesn't exist in this container, right? So it's gonna fail. So, uh, and in order, to, in order to maybe mitigate it, I can define a retry strategy. So in here, it's a quite simple one. And uh, so it goes like this. If it fails, if this step fails, if this simply fails, I want to retry it exactly two times. So no, ma no matter what the reason is, so the retry post is always, if it fails, I wanna run it twice. Sorry, like if it fails, I want to run it again two times more. And in my deck, what I have in here is that, you know, the first deck is the same world, the same that we have used. And the second task is using this buggy template, right? So let's, let's go ahead and see if it's gonna fail. This is a cron work job, sorry, uh, the workflow. So, and then uh, we need to do cron create. Yes, so I, I created it. Let's see, it's already in here and it's gonna run in 30 seconds, but I don't want to wait. Nice thing is that I can go to UI and if I click this submit, it's gonna submit it immediately. So I think we need to wait a couple of seconds for it to appear. Yes, so here it, here it is, it started. So I started the say world has already succeeded and it's 
it is running this one. So because it's a retry, it's like a, it's gonna, there's going to be a head node in here, and this head node is going to retry if it fails. I can see that my first trial has already failed. Again, this exil is not found, and then it tried the second one. So this is the retry policy is for that, right? I declare it twice, so it's going to retry it twice if it fails. So it failed. This is the first try, and this is the second try. Unfortunately, this also failed. So and now it's a big, after two retries, it say, okay, this workflow has failed. And uh, yeah, this is why it's useful. Of course, like it's uh, if it's an error like this, like uh, like how I did, there is no way to uh, well, you know, like uh, recover it, right? Uh, it's always gonna fail. But sometimes, you know, for instance, like there might be like a network issue, you know, like a something something else. Maybe the cluster is not working as you expected. Like you know, if it's the issues like that that may may disappear over time, then it's actually a good idea to retry, uh, which actually happens, right? You know, like in a in a large organization, you know, like the the, the, the networks can be a bit uh, a bit like a not, not ideal, or you know maybe you know like uh, the AWS is having some issues, like we saw I think like in uh, Google Cloud yesterday because of the heat, so it may actually resolve your problem to retry, wait a bit, and then retry. Let's take a look at time. All right. Hey, yeah, we have we have one more uh, question from the audience. You're getting a lot of great questions here. Um, so, in the event that uh, this doesn't fail, or maybe it fails and then it succeeds the second time, but it's scheduled. You've been adding a lot of cron schedules for comparison and airflow. Every run that's distinct has a time stamp with it, uh, so you can figure out which run it was. When you have a run, for example, you had a DAG that was running every minute. How do you distinguish between them in the UI? Can you see all of the previous runs? Uh, yeah, so uh, that's, a, that's a good question. And yes, you can actually, uh, we can, we already have two, two, uh, two, cron, two cron workflows, right? So we can actually see an example of it. And here's a, here, there it is. So this, this actually work, the cron workflow is running in every minute. And I can see that the one has started in three minutes, the other is in two minutes. And this failing one has started in more than one minute, and there you go. You know, there is another one that's already running. So in uh, yeah, uh, in Argo UI, actually, uh, yeah, you know, depending on your strategy, you may want to keep it or not. Uh, that's up to you. But if you if you opt in for uh, keeping it, you can actually see all the workflows that has been run before. And the way to distinguish it is that you know uh, it's gonna have a have a name, and then you know it's gonna like we use generate name. So this one. And then a, a, a unique, uh, a unique ID, so you can distinguish which workflows run in which, like when we can see it here, when it's finished, how long does it take, and etc. Oh, oh, so I see. So <clears throat> those, uh, all of the runs. These, so these are different runs of different workflows. Each of the runs starts with the same beginning section. The prefix being, for example, yes. cron dash workflow dash nine nine bk six, but then. Yeah. The dash after it is something that might be like a Unix timestamp, or, or I don't know exactly what yeah. that is. It could just be random numbers, but that's the distinguishing factor. So, is there a view in here for just workflows so that you can click on? You could just see your workflows and then see historical runs for just a particular workflow. Uh, yeah, I think you can. For instance, uh, let's see this one. Uh, I think my UI is a bit buggy, huh? Mm. Okay, but generally you'd be able to filter on the workflow. Yeah, right yeah, there. and uh, yeah, and uh, of course, like we are running in our like a very lightweight uh, deployment, right? Uh, so we have one namespace, but uh, you know, for instance, in our organization, each team has a namespace, right? So it's mm -hmm. already like organized this way, and you can use the labels in your, uh, you know, you can choose here, for instance, like only show the Chrome workflows, or you can, uh, yeah, there is something wrong in here. Okay. Well, I was expecting what, when it's going to happen <laughs> because uh, there is no demo without crashes, I guess. But uh, yeah, you can actually uh, you can actually filter them by workflow, or you know you can go to the namespace of your of your team and you can do this like a filtering and see you know which ones have failed, which ones have not. Got it. And uh, one follow up is that um, like it's a two part question. One, but for a particular workflow between tasks of your workflow. How do you share data? Like if you've created a pandas data frame or something. Also, do you yes. mind zooming in, zooming in just a little bit on this UI? Yes, there yeah, you go. Thank you. Um, so A, how do you share tasks between them? Do you, can you use like a shared volume in Kubernetes or is there a kind of an easier way to do it? 
And also, how do you isolate storage between different workflows that you don't want, you know, kind of mixing with data? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, uh, yeah, like I said, the first thing that popped in my mind, in my mind is artifacts, which actually is the, is the last uh, example that we are going to see. So you can use artifacts uh, for passing like a data or whatever files, you know, in between steps. Or you can use it to like a store like intermediate steps. You can use it to like as a parameter, like a parameter to give to your steps. So uh, with using uh, artifacts, you can actually accomplish these, right? And uh, yeah, how do you isolate uh, between workflows? Actually, like uh, the the artifacts for the same workflow is stored in the same directory. In like, a, for instance, if you're using S3 for that, it's in 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 that directory, so they don't mix and match. Does that mean that you have to configure your own? external storage before using Argo? Is there no kind of like native Kubernetes way to do it? Yeah, yeah, with Kubernetes, you can, yes, yeah, you can use like a config nest and, you know, like a PVCs and uh, so you can have it. And uh, this, is actually, this is actually what we are doing in our organization, right? You know, first we are writing in the pod and then the, that, di that directory in the pod is actually linked with the S3 and it just syncs. So with that, you know, you can, you can just uh, yeah, do it like that. Or you know you can just configure it with, uh, with I think it has support for like uh, the major the, the all the major uh, cloud solutions so for instance like S3 and you can just use uh, S3 from your workflow so yeah but yeah if you're if you're uh, adapting uh, adapting Kubernetes you can actually do all the tricks that you 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 can do with Kubernetes in our workflows. But you have to if as far if I'm understanding correctly you have to do it yourself. It's not like for example in Prefect or Airflow you pass. It's very Python native. You pass a data frame from one task to another, and Prefect, for real example, kind of like pass that through for you. Yeah. So in here, yeah, because it's uh, well, you know, in YAMLs, you need to declare, you know, how the Argo, like how the artifacts flow. But uh, uh, maybe you can also do it with Python because I saw there are some uh, there, there are some tools that you know allows you to write Python and it converts it to uh, Argo workflows. But oh, cool. yeah. In this case, yeah, you know, I think, uh, yeah, you need to, you know, to define it in your YAML, you know, how the artifact will flow, yeah. Awesome, thanks. Right. I think that was uh, the last one. Cool. So if we have time, we can actually go, actually, yeah, this is the last one, which is a uh, great timing. It's about the artifacts. <laughs> so we have time, right? Uh, yeah, I think that we're good yeah, on okay. time. We have 10 more minutes. Cool, great. So this is actually uh, very related to your uh, to your question, the artifacts, right? So the artifacts are like you can use this like artifacts to forward uh, forward them like forward files or your data, whatever you want, between the steps, and you can also store them. So why you may want to uh, yeah, utilize this functionality is uh, the first thing that pops in my mind is debugging, right? For instance, like what we what we saw, you know, your work, workflow may may just break, you know, like uh, yeah, one day in a year, right, in a year, and uh, and then then you want to be able to do to react it to fast, right? You want to know like easily what happened there, and you know what has what went wrong, and in 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 our in our domain, like if you're dealing with data, the, there's a there's a chance that maybe you know there something was wrong in your data, and you may want to switch. So. Uh, Either in this, like, like in a scenario like this example or any other thing, if you use artifacts and if you're actually, in, if you're actually storing your artifact, storing your artifacts, like after each step, it can actually get uh, the debugging can, can get quite, uh, quite easy because then you can see which step has failed, what was the input of that, and you can, you can, uh, you can try to recreate that, that failure scenario, the. The, the the cause of failure uh, yeah, in your local and it's it's easier than you know just debugging trying to debug the entire workflow right also the ni nice thing is that uh, this Argo workflow is cloud agnostic so you don't need to lock in you know like uh, in any of them in any of the sol in any of the solutions you can just use the you know what we talked about Sphere right you know your cloud provider or you can you just use like uh, the some config maps or something else to uh, to actually do some uh, some of these like a storage in, in a custom way. So in this example, what we are gonna see here is that uh, we will have one step, and it's gonna use uh, use an artifact as an input, right? So it's gonna use this readme.md and as an artifact and do uh, and then we are gonna pass it to the step, and this step is gonna use it. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So this is not a Chrome workflow, right? It's a regular workflow, and we have uh, we have some mixed data as we discussed. 
and the uh, the template is actually quite uh, it's the same, right? But uh, with a with a twist, so it's the same same container that we are running. It's the same command that we are running. Okay, the command is a bit different. Instead of just saying call say, I want to run it like a as a like sh. And in here, for an argument, I want to actually use this file, right? What is this file? Actually, this file is is from our artifacts, right? So I want to define my artifact and use it as an input. So I say input, instead of parameters, this time I write uh, artifacts, and this is my artifacts name, the whale text. And I can find this artifact in this path, tmp say text.txt, which is the same path that I use here with the, with the 755 mob, right? And where this, uh, you know, how this artifact will just ever gonna arrive here is via this thing. So I define my artifact, like this artifact, the whale text, is as like a coming from HTTP from this URL. So it's it's a bit of a, like a simple situation because this URL is actually public, uh, but I can and I can just directly read it. So right, what's gonna do it is that it's gonna get this file from this URL, and it's gonna use it as an artifact, and I'm gonna use this artifact as an input for my step in here. Right. So let's try and submit it and see what happens. Right, so we submitted it. We can go to UI and check what's happening. Maybe I should delete my uh, Chrome workflows because uh, maybe it's loading my cluster. Yeah, okay, there you go. It's here. So actually, UI did a nice job and actually visualized it for me, right? You know, it says that here there is this read MD, read me MD. And its name is real text. It's going to this step. And I see that it succeeded in inputs outputs. I can actually see this, you know, uh, see it in here. And if I click here, it's actually gonna send me back to the fi this file that it's using. And this is the file that I used in in my calce command. And I can see this like a very long uh, yeah, cat of this file. So uh, like this, you can use your uh, inputs, and, uh, but you can, this is just an example for you, uh, the input, but uh, yeah, you can use artifacts as outputs and you can access it in this UI. Uh, for instance, like if it failed, I can easily say, hey, you know, this is actually the dependency input that it used, and I can try to debug it, uh, debug it like with that. Um, and that artifact specifically, where is that stored in your configuration? Is that just local, like in a Kubernetes volume? Uh, no, actually, it's from just a, yeah, it's in a GitHub. <laughs> so it's actually a readme file in off the repo, so it's public right now. Oh, interesting. And so if you were to have written out a file, and for example, you wrote it to S3, since Argo was configured to read and write from that bucket, it would also still be able to display the artifact to you? Yes, yes, yes. So, of course, depending on your yeah local configuration and your authentication. So, yeah, if you click it, yeah, you can, it will take you there. So it's it's... It will show it in the in the scrub in the UI, and if depending on your like a uh, configuration or uh, access, you can actually just click it and uh, like grab the file. Super cool, amazing! Um, wow, we have. Do you have another workflow to show? Uh, no, actually, this was it. So perfect. it's uh, faster, faster than I expected. <laughs> that's, well, that's perfect timing. Um, if there are any other questions in uh, the audience chat feel free to drop them in otherwise we have five minutes left demetrius do you have any questions did you get your technical situation set up uh not the best but uh <laughs> i i just joined pretty late so i can't give you any questions i mean i'll be catching up on the replay it looks super cool uh i got one final question before we close out then um mm -hmm. How would you recommend people get started with Argo? Because Argo, I think, has a pretty wide range of tools that you can use, and sometimes it can be pretty daunting to people. So, how would you recommend kind of? Yeah, paying? yeah, exactly. So this is actually just Argo workflows. Huh? You know, there are Argo events, Argo rollups, Argo CI/CD. So uh, yeah, uh, again, so this if you're uh, curious, if you want uh, like a workflow uh, solution. And uh, yeah, if you're already like a, like wrapping your applications or your your, uh, your solutions in Docker, and if you if you have a Kubernetes up and running, 
then it's actually uh, it can be quite easy to uh, get started, right? You know, it's uh, with uh, with the pod, with the Helm jobs that it's, they are providing, like you did it in your uh, like 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 we did here, like starting on local, you can actually install install that also and then start using it. And uh, yeah, as a general idea, you know, like uh, how you can start using a tool, right? Uh, with just small steps. And this is actually what also we did in our organization, right? So we didn't just start using Argo with like a full one, all the functionalities, right? No, actually we started with something like this, with just simple step, one step the workflows, and yeah, you can just, you know, as you need more, for instance, like, uh, yeah, you know, uh, when your workflow starts to fail, you will realize that you may want to have retries, and so you can build on top of your existing workflows, I think. Super cool. Um, so two more questions. Uh, there were three. I think there's a request for a closing song, but I don't know that we'll be oh, able yeah. to do it this time. <laughs> I think we'll have to maybe stitch it in after the fact and post. Um, two questions, one very ML, one not ML. So for a very ML question, real quick, have you tried doing things like distributed hyperparameter tuning using Argo where you can kind of kick off many tasks, like many pods? Mm -hmm. um, that's one. And then the other question is, seeing as Argo is so generic of a tool, are you finding in your team, in your company, that non-ML people are also picking up and using Argo for other workflows? We, at least at my company, did use Argo for entirely non-ML workflows, and it worked super well. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, I can start from the last one and uh, try to remember the first one. <laughs> so the, yes, you know, actually uh, what we are doing in our organization is exactly like that, right? Now, not only for ML, but also for like a data engineers are using it. We are using actually to like migrate our data, like our entire data and uh, for all, yeah, pretty much like, uh, you know, for the data, uh, data workflows that is that are not, not, uh, not ML. So yeah, it's because it's so generic. You can yeah, you're you're not limited, right? This is one of the points that we discussed. You're not limited, and actually, we are using it for elevating engineering work also. And then uh, and the first question was I prepared to tuning, right? Yeah. So right, uh, yeah. I have yeah, I haven't tried, <laughs> I haven't tried it, and actually, uh, it's been a long time. I did like this type of parameter research. But um, yeah, I guess, you know, why not, right? Because uh, you can actually, uh, with DAX, you can just, you know, like a spam, a lot of, uh, a lot of posts that will run in parallel, which is great for hyperparameter tuning. And maybe you can even do more crazier things, right? So maybe you can just, you know, like generate like a 10 and based on the, like the best hyperparameters out of 10, you can maybe like a narrow down your hyperparameter space using artifacts or some something else, you know, like you can propagate what your, previous run uh, like Epoch has found, and you can like, maybe narrow it. Narrow it. Uh, yeah, so because it's, it's, it, has, uh, it doesn't have like this limitation, you can do a lot of custom stuff, and this is one of them, yeah. Yeah, one cool thing, actually, a thought that I just had as you said that was, if you were combining this with a tool like MLflow or Weights and Biases, and all of your different spawns kind of came together and were training and then logging your metrics and, and your performance um, indicators, <clears throat> you could have a task that's dependent on all of your and 30, 50, 100 tasks, waiting for those to finish. And then it can just come in, pull down your metrics and just know which tasks did the best. And then you can kind of iterate on that until you get down to like as many runs as you want. That'd be very cool. Yeah. Yeah, actually there are a lot of like, uh, yeah, actually this is one of the last things that I want to show you. That's important, it's, it's, it's not important. Ah, yeah, this one. So uh, yeah, I listed these three different like use cases just for inspiration. For instance, like maybe you can have uh, automated C CT, continuous training, you can like schedule continuous training, or you can actually like uh, yeah connect it to CD, right? Maybe like every time you you push to this branch, it can it can just really start a workflow. You can use like a, this like a this uh, this feature for like a, the templates, the cluster uh, workflow templates that we didn't uh, that, uh, we didn't discuss about it today. But you can using the same code, using the same uh, workflow, you can do backfills of your feature. Or uh, yeah, maybe you know, like uh, you're working with a lot of people who want to try different parameters. You know, maybe hey, you know, like if how about like a this hyperparameter, and you can you know give them like some templates, and they can in the UI Argo UI Argo workflow, you can they can set it and run their workflows. And uh, there are actually more and uh, cooler use cases in this link. Yeah, and uh, then you know you can uh, you can check it out for more inspiration. And uh, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to pass it back to Demetrius, but thank you for your time. This was a really, really awesome presentation. Yeah, sure. Thank you. It was great. Yeah. So I've got so many questions around the benefits of using this. I don't know if you talked about it already, but like 
why you would use this as opposed to a cube flow or a, a airflow like Ben was talking about. But I think that is for another session. We'll probably have to have you on the podcast to just talk through like all the orchestration platforms and if you've looked at them and what you think of them. Uh, we're out of here. Thanks, Ben, for taking over with my technical difficulties. Come on. Amazing. That was freaking awesome, dude. And yeah, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Talk to you all Thanks later. So much. It was great. Yeah. See ya. Bye. -bye.